What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work here lady. All right, this story's called, I am doing my job. It's just not with this company. I'm not sure if this 100% fits here, but it is my story about dealing with an entitled carrot. I am a security guard. With the outbreak, we have gotten a lot of new companies and contracts, and there have been several stores that hire my company for mask enforcement. Basically, refusing service for anyone who tries to walk in without a facial covering. This event took place at one of these new contracts, for a home improvement shop, one that promises that you can save big money shopping here. My job at this location is extremely simple and narrow. If I see someone walk in without a mask, I stand between them and the gate, inquire as to their lack of mask, and give them the option of purchasing a mask for less than 50 cents at the nearby customer service desk if they do not have one of their own. For the most part, people are kind and understanding. Many of them apologize saying they forgot and quickly dig out a mask from a pocket or a purse and go on about their way. One day, however, I met the Karen. Here's the lineup. There's me, myself, which is the security guard, customer service employee, manager, and Karen. I just stopped an elderly gentleman and asked if he had a mask. He laughed, pulled it out of his pocket, saying he always forgets, puts it on, and walks through the turnstile. As I'm having the conversation with him, in walks Karen. Karen, staring me down, no mask, and almost runs into the elderly gentleman as she tries to rush past me. I, however, step in her way with a kind smile. Hello, ma'am. Uh, do you have a mask today? No, and I don't need one either. I'm sorry. However, the store policy states that everyone is required to wear a mask. If you need one, you can get one over there. I point to the customer service desk for just 42 cents. I told you I don't need a mask. I just need a washing machine. Where are they? I don't know where the washing machines are. However, I can't let you pass this point without a mask. Please either get one on or see the customer service desk to purchase one. What do you mean you don't know where the washing machines are? What kind of incompetent worker are you? I'm not an employee of this store. I work for a third-party security company. I do not know the store, but you cannot go through these gates without a mask. During this time, Karen tries to walk around me multiple times. I keep stepping in front of her, keeping my hands low and calmly repeating, you need a mask. You obviously work here and I don't like your attitude. Either tell me where I can get a washing machine or get the hell out of my way. She, pointing to customer service employee, will be more than able to help you find what you need, as well as sell you a mask so you can shop here. At this point, customer service employee realizes that something isn't right, as for the most part, as a guard, I smile and wave, pace, and don't really interact with customers. So when I am no longer smiling, standing still, and speaking with a customer, this usually means that something is going wrong. Hello, what can I do to help today? She's looking- I want a washing machine and he refuses to tell me where they are. He just keeps getting in my way and telling me to wear a damn mask. I'm sorry, but he does not work within the store. His job is just to enforce the mask rules. I would be more than happy to help. Do you have a mask today? No, I don't have a mask and I'm not wearing one. Some long-winded ramp about HIPAA and civil rights. Well, ma'am, he won't let you in without a mask. And unless you have one, I would be unable to assist you in getting the washing machine you want. I have had enough. Get me a manager now. Customer service employee then gets on her walkie and radios for the manager to come up. Hello, how are you doing today? I'm doing horrible. Your employees are useless, refuse to help me, and won't even let me in the store. I demand you fire them both. I'm sorry, but he, pointing to me, is not an employee here. We hired his company to enforce mask policies. I've already told you people, I won't wear a freaking mask. Now fire these people and help me get my washing machine. At this point, she is escalating more and more and getting very close 
close to the manager, which triggers my training. Normally, I am not allowed to go hands-on. However, there is an exception when there is a significant threat of violence to myself or employees of the company I'm working at. And it's starting to appear as if some violence may happen. Ma'am, I'm gonna need you to calm down and please back away from the manager. We don't want any physical contact. I'm not talking to you. You're about to be fired anyway. You might as well go home already. He's not gonna be fired. He's doing his job. And I would be more than happy to take you to her washing machines, but you need to get a mask first. Another five minute argument, which I'm forced to stand between the manager and Karen as she's getting more and more aggressive. The manager took this chance to motion for customer service employee to call the police. At this point, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. I won't have you yelling at our security and refusing to follow our policies. I'm not leaving until you fire this butthole and I get my washing machine. And get out of my way! Don't you know it's rude to go between two people talking? He's doing his job making sure no violence happens. We have called the cops. Leave now. About five minutes later, the cops arrive with Karen screaming that we physically assaulted her and hit her when all she wanted to do was get a washing machine. And even after the police reviewed the camera footage, she held to her story. As they attempted to trespass her from the store, she swung at me and luckily missed. That, however, was enough for her to leave the store in handcuffs. I'm not sure why she thought I was an employee. My uniform is gray and black with a bright red logo, and the store's uniform is a lot of blues and greens. But all's well that ends with Karen in the back of a police car. I'm inclined to agree, as would a lot of you. <laughs> I know that a lot of people get upset when uh, the Redditor doesn't press charges. Well, she got that treatment, I guess. No charges were pressed, but she did leave in handcuffs. All right, this story's called An I Don't Work Here Lady Christmas Kindness Story. On mobile, formatting feedback appreciated. Background. Yesterday, Western Pennsylvania had the most snow since 2009. My 2016 Corolla had barely passed inspection the day before, so I was planning on getting new tires in the next week and new rotors and new pads in January. We were low on milk and diapers and so had a Walmart pickup appointment. It was too late to cancel and I thought I had time to get in and out before the snow got too bad. I was wrong. I slid down a hill and hidden SUV stopped at a light, scuffing their bumper and destroying my car. I was able to drive it off the road and park it. I had a wagon in the trunk and decided to still try to pick up my groceries. I checked in on the app in spot four and tried to call, but it went to voicemail. A minute later, someone came up to park in my spot that I was standing in with my wagon. Obviously, Obviously, a man standing in a parking spot in a snowstorm didn't register with him, so I moved. As I was standing on the sidewalk, snow swirling, an older lady looked at me like she wanted to ask a question. She rolled down her window and started complaining that no one answered the phone. I gestured to my clothes, no Walmart logo in sight, and said, I don't work here. I tried calling them too and it went to voicemail. I also said that I was waiting myself and it just crashed my car. About five minutes later, she asked if I wanted to wait in her car. It was snowing so hard my wagon was filling with snow. So I said yes. I got in the car and I told her that I lived about five miles away and planned on walking back with my wagon of groceries. She knew the neighborhood where I lived well, foreshadowing, and though she lived in the opposite direction, she offered to drive me and my groceries home in a snowstorm. I said yes. After another 10 minutes, they loaded our groceries in the car and I put my wagon in. On the way to my house, we talked about politics, Brovid, and our families. Her parents went to the school for the deaf that is about a hundred yards from my house, and she worked as a sign language interpreter. On the way, she pointed out where she used to live, she told me where her children lived, and how much the neighborhoods had changed. She also talked about how she just cancelled cataract surgery due to Brovid and said she really needed it. That made me wonder about the safety of her driving me, but beggars can't be choosers. We made it home 
home safely and I brought my groceries in. My wife brought our three-year-old out to thank her while I brought stuff in. I even gave her a Christmas card. Thanks, Pat from Johnstown. At 88 years old, still my Christmas angel. Aw, that's actually really sweet. Uh, thank you, Pat. You're so nice for taking that stranded individual from a snowstorm. Dangerous people like to hang out in snowstorms. Like snow people. The cold-hearted cousins of the sand people. Alright, this story's called The Case of the Drunken Urinator. Many moons ago, I was working as the night manager of a hotel on Clearwater Beach. I walked down to the Hess station to get more coffee and chat with my friend. Let's call him Dave, who works there. Also, he gives me my coffee for free, so there's that too. Dave and I are standing outside the store when we hear some commotion up the street. We think nothing of it since it was about 3 a.m. and that's when the clubs let out. There's always something going on. A few minutes pass and we are still outside talking. Here enters our good friend, Drunken Urinator. Drunken Urinator heads over to the side of the store and proceeds to live up to his name. Dave yells out to him that when he's done, which I thought he was quite kind to let the guy finish, he had to leave the property. Allow me to point out a few things. Dave is white. I am black. Dave is about 8 inches shorter than me. Dave is wearing a green shirt that says Hess on it. I'm wearing a brown polo. Dave has a mullet. I am bald. Dave has a good beer gut thing going on. I not so much. As simply put, there is no way any rational, sane individual would ever confuse the two of us. Back to the story. Drunken urinator leaves and Dave goes inside. I follow to fill up my coffee cup. It's free, remember? And then head back outside to walk back to my actual place of employment. This is when Drunken Urinator rounds the corner of the store and yells, That's your mother lover right there, pointing at me. First, I have no idea who he is yelling to since he's alone. And second, I immediately see this is going to end badly. So I put my hands up, left one still has the cup of coffee, and start backing away. Dude, I don't work here. You can piss on the whole building if you want. I don't care. Drunken Urinator approaches me and starts babbling out something in drunken speak I can't really understand. What I do understand is that he is poking me in the chest. Uh-oh. He does this a couple of times, all the while I am still attempting to back away, and I warn him. You will stop poking me. You don't tell me what to do. I do whatever the frick I want. He pulls back his hand and goes to poke me again. And so I punched him in that nice soft space under the atom apple. He falls backward a couple of feet and is trying to get his throat working properly again when someone yells out, what's going on? That's my brother. I look up to see brother of drunken urinator, Bodu. <laughs> Let's call him Bodu. Come running over to check. Look, your brother's drunk and mistook me for someone who works here and he had an issue with. He wouldn't listen and here we are. By the way, I'm still backing up. I'm about 40 feet away now because I just want to get back to work. Yeah, he gets like that sometimes when he's drunk. I apologize for him. He gets up to come over and shake hands. Nope, stay right there. We are good. Just stay with your brother and I'm gonna head out. Oh, it's like that? You're not gonna shake my hand? If you come over here, you're gonna end up right next to your brother. Let's just call it a night. Bodu looks at me, then down at his brother, then at me again. He mumbled something and knelt to help his brother get back up, which I took as a perfect time to turn around and walk away. Working as the night manager of a hotel at a tourist spot, I have many of these encounters, but this is the only one I thought fit this sub. OP, you gotta be careful there, man. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, OP was incredibly careful here. The most careful I've seen in any OP, honestly. Yet, they still got, uh, uh, I don't work here late. All right, this story's called Wearing All Black. I am a hairstylist of about eight years. Almost all of my salons have required me to wear all black for a uniform of sorts, dress code policies. Occasionally, I'll go shopping after work around the mall I work near. Here's some important context. I used to work at a major retail chain. If any of you know, certain things just stay with you when you leave a retail job, one of which I absolutely can't 
cannot see somebody just leave a clothes display a wreck. I have an extreme impulse to just refold whatever it was. Yeah, guys, did you know there are real humans that have to clean up your mess in retail? I know. It's shocking. This scenario has happened more than once. I walk into a retail store to do some shopping, see somebody pick up clothing, look at it, throw it down in a crumpled mess. I will try my hardest not to shoot them some side eye as I refold whatever it was. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice someone is lurking behind me. I turn to make eye contact with the shirt crumpler. Can you help me? Do you know where X item is? I reply with, oh, uh, I don't work here. Sorry. But you're dressed like you are. I saw your lanyard. The customer is argumentative for some reason. They gesture to me as if I am not aware of what I look like. I sigh, pointing to my brightly colored Toki Doki lanyard decorated with Pikachu pins. Nah, these are just my car keys. I don't work here. Ow! The customer looks at me, looks at the clothes I was just folding, frowns. Oh, you don't? Their tone somewhat indicates they're attempting to process this information, or perhaps they are suspicious. Ultimately, they walk away slightly annoyed or perhaps embarrassed. I wish I could count the amount of times a scenario such as this has happened, even though I am a hair stylist, I suffer from extreme social anxiety outside of work, and honestly, inside of work. There have been a couple of times I'll bring a change of clothes to appear more incognito when I plan to go shopping, in the hopes of avoiding the army of Karens. Reminder, be nice to retail workers and refold the gosh darn displays. That's a good point, to uh, refold displays <laughs> if you make a mess. I try, like, uh, at least I used to. I haven't gone shopping a long ass time, but I would try to, but I suck at folding shirts. I'm better at it now, though. I figured out the hack. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.